Hi, and welcome to the Electronics and Programming Beginner's Guide. Today we're going to talk about a more theoretical topic, and this topic is kind of on the advanced side, but we're going to use it as a building block to talk about uh, further topics in the future. Uh, the topic are the Norton and Thevenin uh, equivalency theorems. Basically what Thevenin uh, said that you can take any two-port network, so imagine a uh, black box with two connections on it, and uh, as long as the components inside that box are linear, like the uh, ideal voltage sources, resistances, battery, that kind of thing, uh, the output of the uh, Two port network can be uh, summarized, uh, you know, described in a very simplified fashion. That even if the contents of the black box are really, really complicated, is that we can simplify that down uh, to an output. Uh, Norton uh, described essentially something very similar, but the simplification uh, that he did is somewhat different. So let's take a look. Before we get started, I wanted to include a disclaimer. The disclaimer is that uh, while I am going to go over Norton and Thevenin uh, equivalencies, etc., I am not going to go really step by step. I'm going to include, I'm going to hit all of the main uh, points that I wanted to hit, but uh, this is more of a, a summary than a really, you know, really deep down uh, type of. Uh, uh, tutorial for Norton Thevenin. So as long as you're okay with that, we can uh, uh, get started and uh, take a look at some examples. Uh, but uh, even if you are looking for a, a deep down uh, type of tutorial, you know, don't mind watching this because I do, uh, I will hit on some uh, important points that uh, may help you uh, learn uh, how to do Norton Thevenin equivalencies and so on. So let's get started. Imagine that the circuit you see here is a two-port network, that there's a black box that encompasses all of this, and then these two ports are your output. This looks really complicated, and uh, when you put this in a box, you may uh, struggle to try and describe what the output looks like. In essence, uh, Thevenin's theorem says that you can take something that's this complicated and simplify it down to two components, a resistor and an ideal voltage source. This, ne uh, this uh, two-port network then could be described as a resistor and a voltage source, that simply. To be able to create this representation of this two-port network, we need to figure out uh, uh, two out of three things. We need to figure out what the uh, Thevenin resistance is, and this is what it's commonly referred to as the Thevenin resistance. We need to figure out what the uh, open circuit voltage is at the two ports, meaning that what is the voltage across these two ports when nothing else is connected. Uh, and we need to figure out uh, what the short circuit uh, current is, that if we install a jumper that goes across this, uh, uh, what is the current that goes through that jumper? If we know two out of those three things, we can come up with the uh, Thevenin equivalent model. So now let's jump into uh, how do you actually analyze this to kind of tease out what the Thevenin voltage is, what the uh, open uh, uh, circuit voltage is, etc. The Thevenin resistance is the resistance that you would see when you're looking into your two-port network, very specifically with all of the sources inside the network shut off. What does that mean exactly? When you have a current source and the source is turned off, that means zero current can flow, which means that a current source, when it's shut off, becomes an open. And that happens to both current sources inside the uh, uh, black box, or this circuit, whatever you want to call it. 
On the other hand, a voltage source, when a voltage source is turned off, that means that there's zero voltage across it. The only way you get zero voltage is through a short. So a voltage source is replaced with a short. Just like that. Now that we've shut off the sources, we can uh, calculate the, volt, uh, the resistance that you see uh, into this two port network from the outside here. And in the circuit, that's actually fairly easy because what you have is a 20, 20, and 20 ohm resistor and a 30 ohm resistor in series. Because these current sources go open when they're shut off, there's no voltage divider or nothing. So if we add all of these up, we get that the uh, uh, thevenin resistance of the circuit is 90 ohms. In this case, the uh, Thevenin resistance is fairly easy to find, uh, but there are other cases where it's not, and that's when we use the combination of some of our other techniques to uh, go ahead and find the Thevenin resistance. Now let's try and find the uh, open circuit voltage at the terminals. The circuit is very complicated, so there is another trick that we can use to help us simplify uh, this uh, circuit, and that is called a uh, superposition. The superposition theorem, I guess I would call it, says that uh, you, uh, you can shut off all but one source in the circuit, do your analysis, then uh, you turn on another source, shut off the other one, do the analysis, and you do that with, you know, one at a time with every single source, and then when you're done, you take your results from each one and you just add them up. In this case, let's start with the four amp current source here. If we shut off the uh, 12 volt source here and the one amp source here, and let me draw in the uh, jumper for the uh, 12 volt source like that. Uh, we can do the analysis for what is the uh, open circuit uh, voltage out here. What we simplified the circuit down to is a 4 amp source that is flowing through this uh, 10 uh, ohm resistor and this 20 ohm resistor. In this case, no current flows through the top branch because it's open or the bottom branch because it's open. So the voltage out here is entirely uh, dictated by the voltage drop across this 20 ohm resistor here. Because the current source is in series with both this guy and this guy, you only get four uh, amps that flow through this 20 ohm resistor. And that makes the output here 80. volts. Following that same superposition model, now we went ahead and shut off the 4 amp current source, which again becomes an open, and we turned on the uh, 12 volt voltage source. Because the voltage source with the other current supply uh, has no uh, current path, it becomes very easy and the output here at the terminals becomes 12 volts. And again, following the uh, superposition theorem, now we shut off the 4 amp source and the uh, 12 volt source, and all we turned on the 1 amp uh, current source. In this case, it becomes just a tiny bit uh, more uh, complicated, or just tricky, let's go with tricky. This, uh, the voltage across this 1 amp source is gonna be a 1 amp time, uh, uh, times the uh, voltage, oh, sorry, times the resistance of this guy, this guy, and this guy. But uh, this current source is flowing in the opposite direction. So we would have to add up the uh, 20 ohms, 20 ohms, 20 ohms, which gives you 60 ohms. Uh, but this becomes negative due to the uh, direction of the current. So the voltage across the terminals here would be minus 60 volts. Now that we have the uh, three uh, superposition open circuit voltages figured out, all we have to do is add them up. What we get is 
80, which was from our 4 amp source, plus 12, which was from our voltage source, uh, minus 60, which was from our uh, final current source here. And when we add all of these up, our answer is uh, our open circuit voltage here is 32 volts. Now to finally bring everything together, we know that our Thevenin resistance is 90 ohms, and we can go ahead and fill that in. And we know that our uh, open terminal voltage out here is 32 volts, and we can fill that in as well. And now we have the uh, Thevenin equivalent of the circuit. As you can tell, this is uh, far simpler than what we started with, and that's really the basic idea behind of what Thevenin, uh, what the Thevenin theorem uh, describes. This new circuit is substantially simpler than our old circuit, but suppose that uh, we can't quite as easily figure out the uh, uh, Thevenin resistance, and uh, how do we deal with that? Uh, the other way of dealing with it is you can uh, simply apply uh, Ohm's law to uh, the circuit effectively so that uh, if you calculate the sh uh, uh, short circuit current here at the terminals, uh, you can then uh, infer what your uh, Thevenin resistance is by effectively just uh, uh, dividing your uh, voltage by your current which gives you your resistance or in case the uh, uh, the current is easy to find and the resistance is easy to find you can work backwards and figure out what your voltage is uh, now let's take a quick look on uh, how you would actually calculate the uh, short uh, circuit current when calculating the short circuit current you take your output terminals and you short them. And again, the circuit uh, seems quite complicated and we can simplify solving it with superposition. So we'll start with this four amp uh, source here and we shut off the voltage source. And again, when you shut off a voltage source, the voltage across it drops down to zero, which effectively makes it a short. And then we shut off this other current source which a zero current effectively means an open. What we're left with is a four amp source and then a, a simple voltage divider. The current through this uh, ten, uh, 10 ohm resistor here will always be four amps, it, that's uh, irrelevant. But now what you get is a split. Some of the current goes this way all the way through our short and some of the current goes this way through this 20 ohm resistor. Now we're going to apply a simple current divider uh, formula. Uh, with current dividers, current dividers work backwards of voltage dividers. So uh, instead of calculating presumably the current that goes through this way, you actually calculate the current that goes through this way. It's a, it's a little backwards. But what you get is uh, 4 amps uh, times uh, the uh, resistance of this branch which is 20 divided by the uh, resistance of the whole thing which is 90. We can pull this 4 into the uh, fraction here this becomes 4 times 20 and then the whole thing becomes 80 over 90. And uh, normally I would calculate, calculate this out to a decimal to make it a little more uh, palatable for most people. But in this case I want to leave it as a fraction because this fraction will actually illustrate some of our points. Uh, plus uh, 80 divided by 90 is 0.888888 into infinity and that's not something that we can uh, uh, represent uh, uh, exactly without using a fraction. Now that we've calculated the uh, current for the uh, 
4 amp source that was here. We shut off the 4 amp source, we turned on the 12 volt source, and now we can do that same calculation. Very simply here, uh, what you have is a voltage source and a bunch of resistors in series. So what this uh, looks like is going to be uh, 12 over uh, 20, 20, 20, 60, 30 gives you 90. And again, I want to leave this as a fraction uh, to be uh, precise in the calculation. So 12 uh, 90s is what the uh, current is through uh, our uh, short circuit. Finally, we get to our one amp uh, source here. And again, we're going to use a current divider because there is a branch here and some of the current goes this way and some of the current goes this way. And we have to figure out how much current goes where. And again, with the current divider, you do it backwards from a voltage divider. So what we get is uh, 20, 40, 60 ohms. Uh, divided by the total resistance, which is going to be 90 ohms. Uh, we multiply by our 1 amp source, which uh, effectively, you know, times 1 doesn't mean anything, so we can uh, easily just uh, drop it from our calculation. And the thing that we need to keep in mind is that uh, all the two previous currents that we calculated were both going this way. Well, we assume that this direction is positive, but because this current source is going this way, this current is going to go in the other direction. So this current is actually negative. Now that we've calculated all of the uh, currents, we can go ahead and use superposition to uh, add them all up together. What we get is 80 over 90 plus 12 over 90 minus 60 over 90. And what we get is 32 over 90. This means that our short circuit current is 32 over 90. Now that we've calculated uh, all three values of the short circuit current, the open terminal voltage and the Thevenin resistance, we can take a look at how the three interact. For instance, if you uh, know the short circuit current and the Thevenin resistance, you can calculate the uh, open terminal voltage. So the short circuit current is going to be 30, oops, 32 over 90 and uh, current times a resistance gives you voltage. So if we take 32 over 90 times 90, the 90s cancel and we get that our open terminal voltage is 32 volts. Or if we know that our open terminal voltage and our short circuit current, we can figure out our Thevenin resistance. Again, uh, if our uh, uh, open terminal voltage is 32 volts. Uh, voltage divided by uh, current gives us resistance. So then we divide that by 32, 32, oh, not 33, 32 over 90. Uh, this equals uh, 32 times 90 over 32. The 32s cancel and we get that our uh, Thevenin resistance is uh, 90 ohms. And you can see how this can go round and round and you can effectively choose. Do you want to calculate the uh, Thevenin resistance? Do you want to calculate the Thevenin voltage? Or do you want to calculate the short circuit current? And by choosing any of the two, you can find the uh, remaining uh, third item. The next question is, is now that we know what the Thevenin equivalent is, how does Norton fit into it? Norton uh, basically describes the same circuit, but with, instead with using a current source instead of a voltage source. Uh, Norton's equivalent circuit looks like this. Let's see how these uh, circuits here are equivalent. 
from the previous uh, circuit that we looked at, we know that the resistance is 90. I keep writing the wrong thing, 90 ohms. And our voltage here is 32 volts. Uh, Norton circuit uh, effectively uses the Thevenin resistance and the short circuit current. So uh, the Norton equivalent of this circuit is going to be again 90 ohms, but this is going to be 32 over 90 amps. So if you were to pass a current of uh, 32 over 90 amps through this 90 ohm resistor, you would get an open terminal uh, circuit voltage of 32 volts. As you can see, these two circuits are equivalent, or for instance, if you were to short out the uh, terminals here, what you would get is a current of 32 over 90 amps. Now I know what you're thinking, and when I first learned about uh, Norton and Thevenin, I was thinking the same thing. How is this uh, actually important to uh, electronics? And at first, you may not actually see what the relationship is. You, you, know, you learn a technique and you go, why did I just learn that? In a future video, what I'm going to describe is uh, output impedance and input impedance and uh, how that affects circuits. These uh, Norton and Thevenin uh, representations then become very important because they allow you to take something that seems complicated and uh, simplify it down to see uh, how the circuit actually behaves without uh, having to do a whole bunch of calculations. But as I mentioned, that will be in a future video. Again, thank you for watching. If you have any comments or questions, you're always welcome to put them down below.